um, our domain controller and our DHCP server. And I'm going to do IP config all. And notice that we have a PIPA, automatic private IP address. So anytime you see 169, so we're not using DHCP. I wouldn't be able to connect at this point and join the domain because there's no connectivity at layer 3. Remember, you want to really verify things are functioning at the lower layers before you move up into the higher layers. So I want to verify layer 1, the physical, layer 2, uh, data link, and layer 3, the network layer, are functioning properly. So MAC addresses and IPs. Um, if my DHCP server is set up properly, then I should be able to do this. I'm going to release a PIPA with ipconfig release command. And then let me go ahead and renew here. Okay, and this here you can see I've leased an IP address from pirates.arg, and my you know it was the first address in the scope one nine two one six eight eighty three. Here's my subnet mask two five five two five five two five five zero. So proper subnet mask. My default gateway one nine two one six eight eighty two. Um, let's do. Let's look at all of our options here. And now we can see. We'll go here and we'll look. Um, our lease. You know, we have eight days on our lease here before it expires. Again, here's our dynamic IP address. Here's our server. So our domain controller, Sarah, is serving as our DHCP server. And here are our DNS servers. So it's serving as our forward, forwarding DNS server uh, out on the network. <coughs> and again, our host name is Vicky Van Vista. Okay, now that we've leased an IP address, um, let's go ahead and join the domain. And on our Vista client workstation, we're going to go to Properties, Advanced System Settings, Computer Name, and we want to go to Change, and we're a member of Workgroup. Now we want to make Vicky Van Vista part of the domain. And our domain is going to be Pirates. Now we need somebody with administrator credentials, uh, so... Administrator account or an equivalent account with those credentials and password. And again, you know, this provides a bit of security because not just anybody can join Active Directory. It has to be, uh, you know, the only p people who can or who are authorized to join people and computer accounts into the Active Directory database would be someone with, you know, administrator privileges or someone who had been delegated or granted those privileges to add and create computer accounts. And it's going out across the network, it's trying to find our 2008 server. And welcome to the pirate's domain. We must restart our computer. We'll go ahead and restart. Now, there was only a local logon, um, you know, as you noticed before we joined the domain. Now that we joined the domain, we'll have the option of either logging on locally to our machine using the SAM, the local security account manager, or we can log into the domain, at which point, you know, we will have centralized authentication from any workstation on the network that's a part of that Active Directory domain. So, you know, several login options, there's local only, and then we can log into different domains. Now our desktop settings will still be stored locally on this machine. Um, you know, just as they would if we had logged on locally, if we log into the domain, unless we use what's called a roaming user profile. And in a roaming user profile, um, you know, basically the user can roam around the network to different workstations and they'll still get the same desktop. So they kind of get the feeling that they're logging into their, their computer, their machine, no matter where they go. Vista. Um... 
again, here's our domain, pirates.org, and our fully qualified domain name, vickyvanvista.pirates.org. User, other user. Now, if I want to log into the domain, I'm going to say pirates and Now what I'll do is I want to log into my domain and I'm using credentials stored on the 2008 controller, centralized authentication, but I'm logging in on this workstation with those credentials. So I'm going to go ahead and go in as administrator of pirates. When I do that now, for every domain user that I log in as um, that's centralized, it will create for me a new desktop. Okay, we're back on 2008 server, and now if we open up DNS and take a peek, um, notice that it's been updated, dynamically updated with Vicky Van Vista's uh, A record. Now that that, work that that workstation is joined to the domain, we can take advantage of Active Directory's centralized authentication. So again, let's make a user real quick. Remember we had a local Austin Powers um, that we made on the local workstation. Now we're going to create one in Active Directory. Um, we'll throw them here in Users. Or actually, let's go over here and we will make let's make a new organizational unit, and we will call this Super Spies. And here, I'm going to go to New, and let's add a user and. Austin Powers and Austin Powers at pirates.org and let's go ahead and set up our user's password so there's Austin Powers he's in our super spies of you and let's hop over to our Vista client. Now we're on our Vista client, and we want to log in as Austin Powers. I mean, we're logged in as the administrator of Pirates. So okay, we hopped back over onto our Vista client, and we're logged in as the administrator of Pirates. Let's log in as Austin Powers now. Again, he's in our Pirates domain, so. Pirates, Austin Powers, and Password. And in this case, again, you know, it's centralized authentication, so any user account we create in Active Directory can be accessed from any workstation, any computer on the network. And now we'll be creating Austin Powers Desktop. And if you had a roaming user profile, um, it would have his specific wallpaper and my document settings and applications available to him no matter where he logged in.